Hi, I'm Angelica Bell. Welcome to the Royal Bank Business Show. Joining me today is Timothy Armu, a prolific entrepreneur and co-founder at Fanbytes. Timo helped build Fanbytes from the ground up into a 70-person marketing agency that connected brands with Gen Z in a truly authentic way. And in return, the business was acquired in a deal worth tens of millions. And now he's here to break down his growth tactics and tell you how they can be applied to your business, even in uncertain times. So let's jump into it. Timo, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. No, it's great. Um, We like to start off the show asking our guests to tell us a bit about them in 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Yeah. So a bit about your journey and how you got from A to B. 60 seconds. Uh, I was born in Hackney in 1994. I went to live in Ghana for 10 years. I came back here when I was, well, 10. Um, I got the kind of businessy bug at 14 when I started a company called Alpha Tutoring, which is a tutoring business. Um, That business flopped because it should do it. Every first business should flop. Um, and then uh, and then I started a, a second company, Entrepreneur Express, which I was fortunate enough to sell um, within 12 months of starting it. And then I started a company, Fanbytes, at 21, which uh, I grew from zero to 70 people and sold for uh, tens of millions uh, five and a half years after. So I think that's 45 seconds. So we have time. So uh, can I feel the 15 left? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've packed in a lot. Well, you said it's 60 seconds, so I had to accelerate everything that happened. Well, I was talking about your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lived a thousand lives. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I can't believe that you started a business at 14. You had that entrepreneurial spirits from such an early age. But I didn't know it was a business. I just thought it was like a cool way of making money and then... And then I realized, oh, I'm actually providing value. I'm actually providing a service. And oh my God, this is a business. Right. So yeah. at the time, it was just something you wanted to do to make money. Yeah. So what do you think set yourself and Fanbytes apart from other agencies? So I think one of the key things was we focused on a specific niche and a specific segment of the market, right? So not only did we go influencer marketing but then we also went uh niche inside of influencer marketing so we said we're going to help brands to target a gen z audience so like practically that was a big differentiator so many business owners are scared to say we are for these people and not for these people do you think it's limiting the yeah, audience yeah they go oh my god it's limiting etc but If anything, by being for an audience means you can increase the value of the things that you actually provide. So I think that from a practical perspective was um, was was a quite a big thing. I think probably the second one was like we spent a lot of time marketing ourselves. It's so weird. You have a lot of, you know, marketing agencies and all that stuff who spend time marketing their clients, but not marketing themselves. But we spend a lot of time marketing ourselves. I mean, when you put it like that, that is really it's crazy, basic. Isn't it? but yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's like, how would someone know you're good at marketing by you being good at marketing yourself? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like a hairdresser if their hair's not good. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, I've been to <laughs> barbers and I've looked at the barber and if his shape up is dead, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's just, it's just That's- how it is. Exactly. Yeah. That's interesting. Where did you get this sort of entrepreneurial nows from? Because you, you know, it seems like you do sit back and, and observe and then take action. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of this quote and, um, and I've said this before, but I think it's, um, I actually heard it in a Jay-Z lyric. It was like, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And I remember just hearing that once and just being like, this is just going to be the blueprint for my life. I just have this thesis that, you know, um, most of the things that you're trying to do in life have basically been done by someone else, right? So your job really is to figure out how they've done it and then and then just do it. And uh, make it your own. Yeah, exactly. So I, so I think you're right. I think a lot of business owners try, like, try too much to think from first principles. And I think a part of it is because they want to feel like they're geniuses, right? But business really is not about how smart you are. It's kind of how 
like resourceful you are and then how determined you are. And I think that's the way that people should be thinking about business. Do you see yourself as part of a new wave of entrepreneurs? Yeah. So I think, I mean, there's a generation of entrepreneurs who have grown up with the phone as basically their computer, right? Um, And what's even scarier is like, there's a generation of entrepreneurs now who their whole thing is they see the world through the lens of whatever, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and all that stuff. And it's great because all of us now have basically we understand that the way to create value is not just about how many units of this product can you create, right? It's about um, how much of an audience can you build? How much can you drive attention and traffic online? And that's very exciting because mm. now that means you can start a business, you can run a business and scale a business without needing a lot of money because, you know, the 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 variable is more about your creativity. And that that is amazing. Like if you think about the generation of entrepreneurs before, before me, right. You know, the way that you, the way that you built wealth was by like creating physical things, like creating physical things, getting in your manufacturing and all that stuff. And now we just type on keys and stuff happens. Right. Um, Which is crazy to see. So do you think it's easier to have a successful business now than it was before? Yeah. A way. Like it's, it's insanely easier. Like every time, you know, sometimes I'd get pitched by young people starting this business and they say, you know, I started selling this thing on Etsy. I started selling this thing on Shopify and now we're doing 50 grand a month and it's been five months and 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 I'm 19. And I'm like, oh my God, like you are, you are great. You are insane, right? Um, things like that are just amazing because now distribution online is kind of free you can use you know overseas talents like so many things are opening up right now there is absolutely no excuse right now if your thing is i want to build a business if you don't want to build a business that's fine but at the moment it is the easiest time possible possible even in this current climate i do believe in this current climate because i think especially with everything going on I think that it forces you to think about businesses that truly solve problems, right? Um, In the past, uh, you could basically spin up any idea and it didn't really need to solve a problem. It was kind of like, you know, like I'm building this thing and it's kind of cool and I guess some people will like it, Mm -hmm. right? But now because people are more um, uh, choosy about what they spend their money with and what problems need to be solved, it it forces you to start to really think about ideas that like materially improve people's lives. Um, And I think that's great because if I'm honest, there were a bunch of companies or a sector of companies where they were just, they were just solving problems for no reason. It was just like, nobody has this problem, but I guess, but now it's great because you're going to see the great companies being started, which are like truly improving people's lives. And that's going to be amazing. Fantastic. Well, I want to go back to fan bites now. Yeah. Because you sold it. Yes. For a lot of money. We're not going to talk about we're not going to talk about figures. It's a bit uncouth. But was it <laughs> <laughs> uncouth is such a good word. A bit uncouth. <laughs> a bit uncouth. Um, but was it always your aim to sell it off? So I have this thesis that there's basically four ways that a company can end, right? Um or there's yeah, four outcomes. One is that the business fails. One is that the business goes on the stock market. One is that the business gets handed off to your kids. And then the fourth one is that the business is sold, right? Um, the business was not going to fail. The business was not the type of business that goes on the stock market. I started it when I was 21, 22, so I had no kids. Um, uh, yet. Yet, yet. I still don't. Um <laughs> And so the fourth one was basically, that was the outcome. Um, So I think, yes, we had, um, when I built it, I designed it to be able um, to be acquired at some point. um, Mm -hmm. Because the whole thing was, um, I knew with all these things, consolidation would happen at some point. Um, And the main thing was to ensure that we built a valuable enough company um, that 
when it then came to that period of consolidation, we'd be able to 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 uh, sell at that point. So, what was it about your company that made Brain Labs think? Mm, yeah, want them. So, I think I mean fundamentally you have to have a good business right mm. like you can't just have like a basic business and then um expect it to be acquired so i think you know revenue was very strong we were growing you know 150 percent every single year for five years um uh so that was great we had really owned a specific segment in the market like in the, in the influencer market but also the way we had kind of crafted the business where we had a big um, emphasis on technology and software. Um, and then we also had the data part and then we had the services part. Um, you know, Brain Labs were one of the four companies who actually wanted to buy us. So they actually, you know, put in terms and said, right, we want to acquire you guys. And the reason why we were in Brain Labs was because like they also had a lot of stuff around technology and data and services. So for us being an attractive company, I think we just had a solid business in terms of like, you know, profit, revenue and all that stuff. But but we also had, you know, tech and data, which meant we could be quite scalable. Yeah. Um, which, you know, for a lot of business owners they probably don't have like lots of business owners are running businesses which aren't sellable because maybe it's like too dependent on them or they're just trading their time for money so you have to think about how you're building something that can scale independent of you and i think that's something that we did quite well so you you were looking at growth for your company where it was moving on to so for anyone listening who has a business what what key factors are really important to support growth in business what well, key factors um i mean so the first one is always about the people and having people who are going to be able to uh do that journey with you um so many so many business owners get this very wrong where they think that the current team of people they have are also going to be the people in two, three, four years who are going to be there. And the thing is, more times than not, your company and your people reach a limit. And I think um, that was something that I could just see um, myself and some of our team members. I was like, okay, well, if we want to take that next step of growth, we just need people who've been through that journey before. So I think the people is definitely um, the bigger one. And then the second one would probably be operational excellence. After a while, a business is not so much just about, you know, sales and marketing, et cetera. It's just around like, how well can you cater to your existing customers? And um, making sure you can do that is another key growth lever rather than just constantly thinking new business, new business, new business. And were those the key factors that helped your business to grow rapidly? Yeah, I think focusing on, you know, always leveling up your people and then focusing on leveling up um, operationally as well. Um, that was a very, very important thing. Timo, you mentioned that when you first started out, you made mistakes. You, you know, you set up business, you know, your two-three yeah, yeah, business, yeah. and I'm sure you've made bus uh, mistakes along the way. What are the common mistakes you see mm. from sort of your competitors or other business mm. or people who come to you for advice? What yeah. do you say to them? So I think there's a couple. I think the first thing is the founders just not being realistic about their business. Um, I know we see a lot of people talk about, you know, um, billion dollar businesses, et cetera. And everyone then goes, oh my God, I want to build a billion dollar business. And founders not being realistic about the outcome. So often, you know, right now I do a lot of angel investing and I get people coming to me and the whole thing is right. You know, this is how it becomes a billion dollars. I'm like, mate, your business is not going to be a billion dollars. And the reason why is because they just don't have that like realistic view as to what is the outcome of their business. And they're not able to take a long-term view on business. So I think that is that is definitely one. It's more around the founder um, psychology, just trying to understand that actually your business doesn't have to be 
a billion dollar business and what is a realistic outcome because it can get so easy to start making um, just really bad decisions um, from that lens. And probably the second one around um, building companies is not realizing, and it kind of goes back to the first thing that we said, not realizing that there are all these playbooks and things that you're trying to do, which have been done by someone else. And so you should spend more time trying to optimize for learning how people have done it and then implementing in your business rather than constantly thinking from uh, first principles. Yeah, but if people are learning from you yeah, and you've just told your business, you know, yeah. you're doing well. I mean, everyone wants to be like, okay, but I, put I want, out a, I want a slice of that cake. It. <laughs> but uh, but I put out a lot of uh, content about it. And what's even better, though, is, you know, when people ask me about business stuff, I'm very open mm. to it, um, especially if they ask me very, like, specific questions, you know, not just, you know, tell me about your life, All right, mate, you know. But, um, <laughs> but I'm very open to that um, because I've learned it from other people. Um, and other books and resources and all that stuff there. But um, but I think definitely the point about just not being realistic and almost reverse engineering success. That's one thing that I did a lot. I always, always in any business venture and anything that I invest in and anything that I advise on, I always say, well, what's the end goal? Like what's the realistic end goal? And now let's work backwards from that to see what needs to happen. So for example, if the play was right, I want to sell a business for 50 million. I'd go, all right, well, what needs to be true? All right. In this industry, businesses are sold for five times revenue. All right. That means we need to do 10 million. All right. 10 million means that we need X amount of customers. We need to work it back. And then we, and, and, and then we go and do that rather than just, you know, going by vibes basically. Mm. Well, every business wants to be successful. Yeah. You know, that's one of the main motivations for people to go into business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and cash flow is the key to success. Yeah. But we're in challenging times. You know, recession is looming. You know, what is the most important thing for businesses now to be focused on in this time? So I think the biggest thing is focusing on that 80 20 rule. So everybody is aware of that thing, right? Which is 20% of your inputs create 80% of um, your outputs. And because we've had such, you know, fat times where money was plentiful, et cetera, people have almost forgotten that 20%. And I think it's very important now for business owners to think, well, what really is that 20% that is driving the business and driving the business growth and just focus in on that? And that would mean very hard decisions of saying, well, this doesn't matter as much or this doesn't matter at all. Um, and honing in on that is the way that you're really going to win. And I think probably the second thing is spend more time with your existing customers. Businesses get so enamored with, you know, uh, new customers, new customers, let's get more, let's get more. But it is an absolute goldmine when you spend time with your existing customers who already um, trust you, love you, and just try and give them more value. So those are two very tactical things that I'd say to business owners now, because the 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 days of, oh yeah, it doesn't matter if we lose this one because there'll always be another one. Those days are long gone now. So loyalty is key. Loyalty is incredibly key, yeah. So for small businesses, any key points you say that they should avoid or look out for? Avoid... Um, vanity purchases so vanity purchases are hires that you kind of think would be nice but actually you don't really need that's a vanity hire yeah getting swanky offices for no reason that's a yeah you know vanity purchases um and also i think a final point of that is growth growth doesn't always mean more people I feel like in business, we say, well, we want to grow. And then it's like, oh, let's just get more people, right? But I think that, especially during this time, it's going to encourage and force people to think, how do I create more value given my set of people rather than just, um, you know, just let's just get more bums on seas because that's the way that we show that we've grown. Mm. Um, so those are three things there. 
One of the things you said um, earlier on is that you tapped into sort of the zeitgeist of the moment, the influences yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Are there any trends at the moment that businesses can look at to help them grow their businesses? So I think one of the things that I'm particularly excited by is everything going on with short form video. So by short form video, I'm talking, you know, TikTok, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels. The reason why I'm really excited uh, by that is it's still so early and there's still so much opportunity if a brand can create their own following on those um, platforms. I think it's, it's so early and, you know, Views are still increasing, followings are, are increasing, and brands should spend some time thinking about that uh, because at the moment, not even at the moment, like for the future, I think every brand is kind of going to become like a media company, right? Whether it's the bakery down the road all the way to some oil and gas company. And by that, I mean people aren't really going to care about who the brand is. It's more what is the content that they put out on social. And I think... Uh, that is such an amazing opportunity if you can build your audience on those things. Um, because uh, currently it's just free game right now. Mm. It's, 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 it's free game. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It just requires a lot more creativity and then you win. Um, and so that's it. It's interesting because if you're not on one of these platforms yeah, and even if your business is brilliant, yeah. People aren't going to, they want to exactly. see it. They just want to see it, don't they? Exactly. I mean, there's so many stories I've seen, right? There was this, um, I think, Scottish uh, furniture company. They were just in some random place. And they have sold out six months straight. Every Like every single month, they sell out and make hundreds of thousands. The reason why is they started a TikTok account showing the people who work in the furniture store. And of them like packing their orders and of them, you know, having lunch, having breakfast. And like people have fallen in love with the characters. So it's like a, a mini reality exactly, show. Exactly, exactly, right? And so they've just fallen in love with them. And they're like, well, I live in whatever, Latvia, but I'm still going to buy my stuff from these guys <laughs> because I feel like, you know, Ben there is my friend. Yeah. Um, and it's such an opportunity. Oh, it's amazing. So t give us three tips you would give to someone wanting to scale up in a business to scale up yeah. okay so they've already got their business already got their business yeah so three tips so the first tip would be to focus on that 80 20 rule okay like really assess your business and figure out what 20 percent is driving uh the 80 percent of the output um because that could also mean you know what 20 percent of of your people are driving 80% of your output because then you can almost replicate those people. Um, that would be the first one. And then do you have, does that mean you have to be no, a little bit- You don't fire the other ones. I was going to say, <laughs> no. I said, do you have to be harsh with that? No, you no, know? no. Um, Or make difficult decisions to yeah, focus on yeah. that 20%? Yeah, like make difficult decisions to almost replicate those 20%. That would be the first one. Um, the second one would be um, to- really position your product as a painkiller and not a vitamin. So there's this whole thing that, you know, business ideas are either painkillers or vitamins. Vitamins are like, you know, nice to have. Yeah, that's nice. Painkillers are, I have a headache. I need to solve this. Um, and I think even with Fanbytes, a big thing that we did, you know, in the first few years, we were kind of a vitamin. It's like, yeah, you know, here's a way to work with these influencers until we like changed the business and almost was like, these influencers can make you guys more money. You know, brands, if you spend X, you make more money. So we instantly became a painkiller because brands always want to drive sales. Um, and then the third thing uh would be um, lower the intensity on yourself. Um, so I think this was something that I didn't do well until later on, probably in the first three years of fan bites, I was quite a stressful person. I was very- Really? Yeah, I was very man, like, okay, guys, quick, 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 speed, speed, right. speed, right? Um, and then what happened was I realized that by that behavior, it was affecting other people in a way where maybe they couldn't handle that level of intensity and speed, which really when you realize that 
a company is just a group of people um, that have come together to solve something. You need your people to also be down for the ride. And so the moment that I started almost reducing the pressure on me um, and started to look at the game of business like a game and more, right, you know, what input do we need here? What what um, action do we need to do to get to that next level? Um, that really helps. So I, I think for business owners, it will be stressful. It is stressful. But also when you almost take a step back, if we're talking about scale-ups as well, if you almost take a step back and, and you realize, you know, how far you've come from it just being an idea or it, or it just being like a random thought that you had in your mind, that would lower the pressure that you have on you. Um, and that will help you to become a better performer. So to wrap up the show, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? The best piece of advice I've been given was actually from a book I read called Psycho-Cybernetics. And the whole concept is around um, neuroplasticity. And I think for me, it is to behave as if the world is the way that you want it to be. And then the world will just open up for you. And I remember reading that and just it just opened up it's my amazing. mind. I was yeah. just like, well... I'm just going to be my future self and I'm going to act like my future self and I'm going to make decisions like my future self and I'm going to, you know, think about money like my future self. And then the world just opened up for me because it just acted like I was that person. Um, and so that for me, it's more of a psychological thing. Mm. Um, fundamentally changed my life. Amazing. I'm going to start thinking like that. So there you go. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> Timo, thank you so much for joining me on this episode and thanks to you for listening. Remember to hit follow and subscribe so you don't miss our incredible guests still to come. And if today's episode has inspired you, head to our website to find more insights and potential solutions that could help you take action today. Until next time.